Isla Hewlett. I was Isla Hobby when I was in school. Came to Fort Hayes because my mother had been a student here at Fort Hayes and uh, she didn't do a degree but she did a certificate, I guess is what it was called, and was a school teacher. And then when my sister and I graduated from high school, we wanted to go to college and so we came to Fort Hayes. My name's Gary Hewlett. I was born in Wyoming but lived in North Central Kansas most of my life. Came to Fort Hayes in 1954 as a uh, student and I didn't come here for all the programs and that sort of thing. I came here because a blonde girl from Tipton, Kansas was coming here and I followed her and that's been almost 65 years ago that we got married. And I was a chemistry major, and I guess I was a chemistry major because I was always fascinated with chemistry. And Dr. Harold Kogel was my major professor. When I was a student, at first I just worked in the storeroom at the chemistry department. And then when I was, I guess, a junior, I was a student instructor in the laboratories and continued doing that until I graduated. We got married before we got finished with our degrees, and at that time, uh, we just you know, were very poor students, so we just kind of had to make do until Jean Stauffer, who was at that time the Dean of Women, invited us to become married counselors in Agnew Hall. And so then we were married counselors in Agnew Hall, and that meant um, checking to see that all the girls were in at night and when there were panty raids we had to be on guard to try to <clears throat> take care of the lingerie <laughs> and so we had some very interesting times but it was a very good experience and we enjoyed it a lot. Yes and we had to help a few inebriated girls uh, when they came in in the evenings too you know because there was there was a time I can't remember was it 10 o'clock or something they had to be in and sometimes some of them came in a little wobbly from having been down to the brass rail, which many people in Hayes would remember. One of the most significant changes is how the physical plant of Fort Hayes has changed. The university farm used to be over where Wooster Place is now. And uh, the buildings that have been added uh, are just incredible. The current Forsyth Library was not here. Actually, this was an intramural playground. People would play touch football and that sort of thing. And there was an old gymnasium over where the old schoolhouse is now. That's where we played various kinds of sports. We had PE in there. Students today would not know about beanies or belt lines. I mean, all the freshmen had to wear beanies. And if you were caught without them, the guys would get lined up and you'd have to run through a belt line they'd paddle you with with paddles. <laughs> well that in order for freshmen to be able to not have to wear beanies anymore we had a tug of war between the freshmen and sophomores wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway uh, if the freshmen won why then we didn't have to wear the beanies anymore and unfortunately our year we had to keep on wearing beanies because <laughs> we didn't win the tug of war. The tug of war was held right near Jellison Bridge, which is goes which from wasn't ca there. campus no. across to Custer no. Hall, and it wasn't nearly as treed then, and there was water in it most of the time. <laughs> so and there it was wasn't, fun. Yeah, there wasn't a cover over the bridge. It was just yeah. a little bridge across the way. Isla could speak to this better. Something about dress codes for girls, particularly, they couldn't wear jeans and. Yeah that sort of thing. Students today would not not understand that at all. People have asked me, what was the biggest change you saw at Fort Hayes? Changing the enrollment process. <laughs> <laughs> the enrollment process used to be, oh, it was terrible. It occurred over in the Union, the Memorial Union, and uh, kids would have to go over and enroll, and the class would be closed, they'd have to come back, they'd have to find a new class for them, they'd have to go back over to the Union. All of that changed. That and grade submission, which you could do electronically. Those are two big things that happened. 
signs of the times. We went to all the football games and all the basketball games and track meets and things like that. But they also had dances, you know, that university had for us. And those were big events. There would be the Christmas ball and things of that nature. Fort Hayes has the Encore series. Uh, back when we were in school, they, they didn't have that. But we had some uh, fantastic performances over in Sheridan Coliseum before it was turned into the Performing Arts Center. We saw Van Cliburn, the pianist, Andreas Segovia, the guitarist, Spike Jones and his City Slickers, Benny Goodman was here. And we had a lot of people like that. Saw Linda Ronstadt. She sang down at the, uh, at the Fort Hayes football field outdoors. I had the opportunity to meet Gloria Steinem, the mother of the women's movement, I suppose, in, in America. I also had the opportunity to introduce Dr. Garrett Hardin, who is the author of The Tragedy of the Commons, one of the ideas that really impacted the environmental movement in, in America. Harry Belafonte was here. We remember going to his concert. So it was a lot of fun, long time ago. So we, we don't see those things now so much. Well, lots of big performers uh, would be on a trip between Denver and Kansas City, and it made a place that they could stop and give a performance. And I think that the Fort Hayes probably benefited from that quite often, and we enjoyed those kind of events a lot. When I came as a student, I worked as a janitor in the old Sternberg Museum, which is now McCartney Hall. Got paid 39 cents an hour for working there, and George Sternberg was still alive, and I had a lot of conversations with him. I didn't realize he was quite so famous at the time, but I'm an ecologist, and my career was set by my relationships with Dr. Albertson and Dr. Jerry Tamanik. I spent a lot of time in classes with them and a lot of time out in the grasslands doing research. Jerry Tamanik and I published a lot of papers together. After I finished my PhD in, in Canada, I was on the faculty at the University of North Dakota and then had a call from Dr. Jerry Tamanik asking me if I'd come back to Hayes and then we came back. They set my career on, on its path. I also worked for Lyman Wooster doing some photographic work and Fred Albertson for whom Albertson Hall is named. Both Isla and I took bacteriology <laughs> from Stanley V. Dalton, former registrar, and that suite in Pickin Hall has been named for him now. He was a great guy. We learned a lot from him. He had some good professors, really good professors, yeah. And, and some bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was very fortunate in having really good professors in the chemistry department and they were very encouraging. And In those days, women didn't go into things like chemistry nearly so much, so there were not a lot of young women in my chemistry classes, but I didn't find any discrimination against me. And uh, when we went to Canada, I was very fortunate. I guess I had a good enough background that I was able to start instructing in the chemistry department there. So I was very fortunate and, and enjoyed it a lot. After I graduated, I was the secretary to the Dean of Men, who was Dick Burnett at the time. And I did that while Gary was doing his master's degree. And then when we moved to Canada, well, I guess I first worked in the hospital laboratory at the in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And then uh, I had the opportunity to start instructing laboratories at the University of Saskatchewan in the chemistry labs. So I did that uh, for a year, and then our son was born, and so then I did information about the South Saskatchewan River on uh, for the Department of Chemistry. She, she's playing down what she did in Canada. She also tested 
the water in Saskatchewan, sent in by people out in the boondocks of Saskatchewan, tested the water to see if it was safe for babies to drink it. Nitrate analysis of the water, so she was, she was involved. When we came back to Fort Hayes, they were needing help in the chemistry department, and so I began working as an instructor in the chemistry department, and I did that for quite a number of years. I'm a, a trustee in the board foundation um, for Fort Hayes, and uh, we try to support athletics with going to the football games and that sort of thing. Our main thing, I think, is going to musical events, the symphony, band concerts, band concerts and that sort of thing. So we've seen a lot of changes take place during that time, and it's been a great place for us. It's a great place to go to school. We love it. Fort Hayes has been our life. You have to remember, we've been around here for 68 years. That's a long time. Over half the time this university's been in existence. Our lives have been so tied up with Fort Hayes. It's a great school. We see the kids today and they look really young. And of course, the freshmen today weren't born when we retired. So we're old people and we see the changes that have taken place in young people.